five breaking news for you. We've got a taught Sergio Regulon, Regilon, Regulion. I still don't know how to pronounce his name. However, you know who I'm talking about. Fabrizio Romano has just tweeted. We've got to talk about it straight away. The news coming out of Spain, which was reported earlier by Marsa, is that Manchester United are um, looking at a deal for him. They, but the problem is, is that um, is the buyback clause. They don't want to pay the 30 million as well. And Fabrizio Romano has had his say on the situation as well. And it's really interesting because Mark literally earlier on was saying, good, piss off, I don't want him. Bloody hell, don't come here. We got Luke Shaw. Now, Fabrizio Romano has said, Regulion deal, Manchester United are considering a move by days, but won't pay the 30 million euro price tag. Real Madrid also asking for a buyback clause. Personal terms, not an issue, so we know that. And Regulon wants to join Manchester United. Opening bid to be submitted soon. Sevilla are out of the race. So that is the absolute latest on that coming out from um, Fabrizio Romano. You know how credible he is. And look, I think this is um, this is interesting. Man United will not accept a buyback clause in any deal for Sergio Regulon. And I stand by that. I think that's spot on. I do think that's spot on. For me, if we get a player on our hands who's looking like he's doing bits and then all of a sudden... Um, he he gets taken off our hands. We don't want that. We don't want that. And for me, people can talk about the protection for Luke Shaw and maybe Luke Shaw's our best left back because he is our best left back at the time. But Regulon looks very attacking, looks very aggressive. The jury's still out. He might not make it in a Premier. He might not come and be definitely better than Shaw. But what I do know is that we need to um, have better competition in there. And I agree with that um, no buyback situation. I have got Alexis Nunes with me as well. She is waiting in the wings. I can see her. Let's see if she is all good to go. Yes, she is. What are you saying, Alexis? Hey, hey. I'm happy. Hold on. I'm going to make my camera like a little yeah, bit. Yeah, there you go. The whole framing situation. Yeah, you know, like, framing. Now that I don't have like my boys at work to frame. Look at us twinning. We're <laughs> twinning, man. We're twinning. It works. It works. You've got twinning. the red lipstick. I was saying that we're hat. determined to show that we are not, that David Beckham is not the only one that can pull off this jersey. <laughs> I like it. I like 100%, it. 100%, man. That's the, I've, I've told everyone the applications are still open. We're accepting new members all the time if you want to jump <laughs> in the third pick club. I'm not going to do that. I told you so and say you can't come in. Anyone can join. It's fine. It's fine. Listen, Alexis, thanks for joining us. Um, we've got to react to this breaking news um, from, from Fabrizio Romano and obviously outlets in Spain and Mars are saying that Manchester United are in for Regulion. Um, Regilon, Regulion. I don't even know how to say his name. I'm not going to lie. But, <laughs> <laughs> how you how you how you pronouncing it? Regulion. Re, oh, reg, regulion. regulion. The accent on the O means you go harder there. Okay, Regulion. Yeah, Regulion. You know we'll just call him Dave. <laughs> <laughs> As yeah. I've learned, like with Adnan Yanazai, everyone was just like Janus, Janusaj, Jan Janus, and then they're like, you know what, Dave. <laughs> Dave, easy. We call him that. But what are you saying about this news, man? I mean, apparently Manchester United say they they want to miss out the buyback clause. Um, and they also don't want to pay the 30 million uh, euros price tag. Um, how do you see that news? And, and do you think he is what we need? Man, I mean, when I tell you about I'm excited for this one, or I was quite excited for this one, because I know everything we've all been caught upon, Jadon Sancho, Jadon Sancho, Jadon Sancho. And I think going forward, United do look exciting. We've seen that, you know, man like Rashford, you have Greenwood, you have Tony Martial as well doing bits. And then finally the likes of, you know, Bruno Fernandes seem to bring out that perfect bromance with Paul Pogba. So going forward, I was excited, but it is really in defense where that's probably the reason why, even though where United finished last season and it is, it does look really good on paper. I wasn't really happy because the defense is literally what keeps me up at night. God, no, I wake up at like 3 a.m. and I just go, what are we going to do? Because I understand if you don't have the best back line. Um, and I understand that there's still a ton of questions around Harry Maguire because we keep saying that United needs some sort of an authoritative figure, which is what, you know, Ole has said Harry Maguire can be. But when we think authoritative figure, we look at the likes of you know, Nemanja Vidic, Rio Ferdinand, um, Patrice Evra. And right now we can't even have Harry Maguire in the same paragraph, much less sentence as those men. And, and we really need that. You look at how Man City struggled as well for a little bit back there without Vincent Company, because when you lose a figure like that, it does affect the team negatively. And I keep saying the fact that David De Gea has had a tough season or two right now, you at least want your back line to look good. And I think that even 
even though it may not get people's blood boiling as much as you know attacking signings i wanted a defensive signing and this is why i've had my eye on this one as well and i've been like fingers crossed come on make this work but at the same time i do understand united in the sense that you know they, they of course it has been a bit of a fall from grace but at the same time, you don't want to be bullied in the transfer window. We absolutely cannot. We've seen them not be bullied for the likes of Jadon Sancho. And I've spoken to all of our, you know, ESPN correspondents that are based in Manchester to hear, you know, obviously their thoughts about whether this Sancho deal is going to happen or not. What's it going to take for it to happen? And they have said time and time again that United refuse to be bullied for it. And I keep saying, but isn't this somebody that you just will just be like, you know what? Take what you want. Give us Sancho. Because this yeah, is exactly. what but they say they say no, and you know I kind of I kind of respect that. So if they're not going to be bullied for Jadon Sancho, I don't expect United to be kind of bullied, I suppose, with you know this deal with Regulion. But the thing is, as well, what people have told us is that, I mean, when you think of the likes of Manchester City, even feeling a bit of a you know penny crunch given the coronavirus pandemic, you stop and you think to yourself, "Wow, Man City," because I think Man City just go into any shop and they're like. They just know? get what they want. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, so think that Man City has had to stop and think, hmm, how can we spend wisely? You know, I it, and I know that money is not really that much of a problem at Man United, but still, we do want it to be spent wisely. I think this would be a wise choice. I definitely right now would take almost any reinforcement in defense because what I want United to concentrate on, I suppose, this season is squad depth because even in the games when we saw, like especially Europa League, once we start to make substitution, I realize that the A team say is here and the A team is still a work in progress. But the drop off to the second team, it was like it's too big. Yeah, it's too big. I was it's like, it's almost like Premier League and then Sunday League. With all what do you think Regulian would do for Luke Shaw? Well, how do you think it affects Luke Shaw? Do you think that he comes in and if Regulian looks bright, then see you later, Luke Shaw? Do, do you see that, or do you see it as actually? He needs to kind of earn his way in. Do you think it's a direct replacement for Luke Shaw, this Regulian deal, if, if it goes through? I wouldn't throw him in just yet. You see, I really like Luke Shaw. What I like about Luke Shaw, and everyone can make the jokes whatever they want about him, I love that man's work rate. And he literally puts everything on the line there. I feel like every game he goes out, and someone argued that he does um, have a point to prove, but every game he does go out like he has a point to prove. And I know he definitely does. And I think that, like I was saying, what I want to concentrate on is squad depth. I want um, that kind of gap to come down somewhat. But I would think if Rego Yon does come in, give him the time, let him settle in. We don't know how he's going to settle, but he's still young from, again, speaking with a couple of um, our guys based in Spain as well that tend to cover like Madrid and whatnot. They do say that people are excited about him as well. And I think I think that it would be it would be a great addition. I wouldn't chuck him in and take away Luke Shaw just yet. You know, I'd say mm -hmm. give it time. I'd say, you know what, even give it maybe half a season, even the season and see how it goes. Um, because then we know the transition of, as well, moving to a different country, a different language, of course, getting used to the pace of the Premier League as well, is already things that can throw off any young player. And mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking about a man in defense that's going to come up week in, week out with the likes of, you know, like Aguero and, and Sterling. And, and then look how exciting Chelsea are looking now. I wouldn't even want to come up with any of them, come up <laughs> against them. So um, I guess we'll see. We'll see. I, I'm not ready to give away Luke Shaw just yet. Okay, fair yeah. enough. Um, Raul Matthew says, does Alexis work also work on ESPN FC? This is the same Alexis from ESPN. So hold tight all the ESPN crew inside the house as well. Um, and I think Mark's in the comments. He's saying big up Hugh. I don't know if Hugh, um, Hugh, it's not, it won't be Hugh Wizencroft. I think it's Hugh Wizzy. He's in the comments somewhere. Um, I haven't seen what he said, but big up Hugh if you're watching. Um, if you are just joining us, we have got Alexis from ESPN. Big up to Alexis for coming on and joining us. Um, and apparently that Manchester United are close to um, putting in a bid at least um, for Sergio Regulon. Um, that sounded French. What am I doing? That I know. French. I was like, you mean like... <laughs> I, ain't got, I ain't got the Spanish. I ain't got the Spanish twang. And basically, get your comments in. Um, because really, what we're saying is, is that, is he going to provide competition to Luke Shaw? Does he come in and play ahead of Luke Shaw? Um, who knows? But that is going to be one that is going to be... Uh, we're going to have to look out for that. David Parker says, Sancho had a tough day yesterday. Two interceptions against uh, the No Saints. Um mm -hmm. Well, I think about the NHL because of the NFL, just basically because our owners are more interested in the NFL. I think, yeah, <laughs> to be honest, with the way it's going there. Then there's uh, another super chat. 
Um, any other deals on the table after Regulon as Sancho um, says Macaulay? Um, well, in terms of on the table, who knows? I mean, we're talking about the Thiago situation, Alexis. Um, well, I mean, look, on Thiago, that's, that's a potentially another deal that could be done. With the, with the way that we're kind of moving tight with the money and not really wanting to spend a lot right now, we win for Rick Regulon. We obviously want Sancho. Could you see Thiago in that as well? I as well literally will go to United right now. I would go to Ed Woodward and I would tell him if he wants some of my salary to make this happen, then he can happily take it. Because honestly, this I mean, Thiago, I don't even need to sit here and tell you guys how good he is. Anyone that watches him just knows how good he is. And I mean, of course, knowing the fact that Liverpool have had their eye on him for a bit and, and obviously things, you know, for some, what, one reason or another seem to be held up there. And, and one of the things, I mean, I spoke to as well, one of our analysts on the show, um, Don Hutchison, who played, and he said that he thinks that even though you look at Liverpool now and you don't think that they need anything else because, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, he thinks that Thiago adds a next level to Liverpool that they currently don't have right now. They don't necessarily have... Um, that kind of a player, so to speak. And I was listening to him saying that, and I was like, gosh, well, if United could take this, then why not? Because I think we do need to try and get back to the days where United has these quote-unquote world-class players. And that is a phrase that we don't throw around for just anybody. And I understand that there are great players, there's good players that we definitely have. Um, right now on the team, who I suppose would you say is like world-class? Of course, Paul Pogba. But Paul Pogba in a United shirt, has he been world-class? I mean, you look at Marcus Rashford, I've got mad love for Marcus Rashford, of course. That's right. who's right on the back of my shirt right now. Um, that would be probably world-class. David De Gea once in a blue moon, definitely. You know, he's mm -hmm. best player in the we world. Haven't, we haven't seen the consistent levels, though, have we? From, from yeah, exactly. Lovely. Basically, like what I'm saying is, again, when you're comparing at our closest competitions, and again, even though there is a big gap, but you look on paper on the table on the table just from last season now we have to look at united competing with the likes of city and liverpool you mm. know and of course chelsea and chelsea now even though that we have yet to see them play with all their new fancy signings you would still look on those signings and say there are quite a few world-class players on there you know mm. uh, you look at city with the way how they could uh, you know take off the likes of sterling and whatnot and and you see Sometimes even Aguero not starting, and you're like, these people have Aguero. We've got the quality of depth, and that's what I don't understand when everyone's like, oh, but do you need um, Thiago? Like, where does he fit? I'm just like, bro, yes. at the end of the day, when someone's not fit or someone's not on it, or you just want to just take it to a team and just come with them with pure fire, that's the kind of depth that you need, isn't it? Exactly. And what we need to remember as well is that we have Champions League this season. That's something that you know, we wanted. Well, everyone was screaming that, and I feel like we have wanted it for so long now. But I also needed to step back and realize. And I remember said to myself, I would rather not get Champions League if because I'm not looking to get knocked out in the group stages and embarrassed again. You know? <laughs> we can't have that. No, 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 no. It doesn't look good seeing Manchester United struggle in the Champions League. You know, if you don't go in the Champions League, I said, then we need to know how to compete. The Premier League is already you know, at a serious pace, and this is already an unprecedented season. You know, it's going to be a longer season, but in shorter time, there's things that we're up against that are just outside of football right now. And the fact that we have one extra competition, and not one extra competition, but the competition. Yeah, the one you want to be in. Yeah, it's not a hindrance. You, want to be in there. you don't want to go out there and be embarrassed by the likes of, you know, City or Liverpool or Bayern or Real Madrid or even Barcelona, who've been having a tough time as well. You literally want to go there and take it to them, as we would say, you know, in Jamaica. You don't want to just say, all right, well, we've made it. That's a trophy in and of itself. Like, no, we're not Arsene Wenger. We're not saying that that's a trophy in and of itself. Yes, it is a great accomplishment, but you want to compete, you know? Um, people talk about swimming with the big boys. When people still see the name Manchester United, that's a big boy name, you know, even though people so obviously for the last six seven years you know united have not been a quote-unquote top top club but when you see that name you expect that name to compete deep into the knockout stages absolutely um there's a contribution here from mike thomas big, big up yourself mike flex today's update is actually huge having a dortmund coach today say talks ongoing um is him backtracking on what he said in august after their deadline was um was missed confidence is growing in reference to sancho there um, yeah, I mean, look, we all got went into kind of meltdown yesterday saying, 
Sancho hasn't trained. That he wasn't he wasn't mentioned in the press conference. Like, oh my god, it's going to happen. Then we hear a few reputable journalists saying, "Relax, he did train. He trained okay, and they got a game tonight. Interesting to see what happens in that game tonight. I think they got a cup match tonight, Dortmund. We'll see whether he's involved or not, and see what's happening there. But what we are seeing is is news coming out that um that the, 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 the coach is basically saying that um you know there's talks ongoing. So have we still got Alexis? I think she's frozen. She's gone. She's gone. There she. Okay, let me take her out of that one and add her back to this one. There oh, she is. You know, you just froze. <laughs> like, you're, you're still there, just frozen. Oh, no, it's not there. It's gone. It's gone. It's, yeah, technology. I just, my, my laptop likes to halfway through broadcast connect to my neighbor's Wi Fi. Oh. And I just realized it was doing it. So I had to, like, switch it back. I was like, calm down, laptop, calm down. But, yeah. uh, anyways, yes, carry on about Jadon. <laughs> um, basically, yeah, that, um, you know, we all kind of went into meltdown yesterday saying that, um, you know, he hasn't trained. We were like, oh, my gosh, he hasn't trained. Maybe he's on a plane to Manchester. Maybe he's coming over to England. Everyone getting gassed. I've done a show on it as well, only to hear a few hours later, yes, he did train. Yes, he's in the squad. And then their their coach, head coach today, has basically said, although there's talks going on in the background, um, et cetera, et cetera. So he's basically kind of maybe backtracking a little bit in terms of saying there's talks going on, but we're still planning with him. And Simon Stone, very good journalist over here in the UK, has said United – want um, a wide player, a few options if Dortmund don't relent on Sancho, but three weeks to go. Basically saying what we kind of know and that the pursuit of happiness continues. Um, what are you saying about this Sancho thing, Alexis? I mean, do you even have any little insights? You know what I mean? You might know a man who knows a man or something. <laughs> I know a man who knows a man who knows a man, you know, but I haven't spoken to him on this development today because, as you know, today's my off day, but yeah. a broke for you. But um, it is, like I said, the number one thing that I keep asking, you know, even our men who know a man, um, is just that isn't this a signing that United literally should just open the checkbook and be like, you know what, go on through. This is, this is J.Dot Sancho. This is a world-class player that, well, at least I rate him as a world-class player that I feel like United as well needs, not just needs one, because of course, Paul Pogba's there, he's a World Cup winner. We know that Marcus Rashford as well. I think he's world-class, as I just said, but we need more of those. We need a team of world-class players. Like, but I mean, just looking at some of the archive, like matches that they throw up, you know, in commercials and stuff. And I was seeing like, I remember I had a joke with my brother saying, when I go and I get a new United jersey, who am I going to put on the back? You know, because <laughs> you know, good enough, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. With all due respect, too, but like in the back before us, like we used to have to like flip a coin and be like, God, did I want Skulls? Did I want Giggsy, Cristiano there? You know, even bringing the likes of Edwin Van der Sar, Schmeichel, etc., straight from the keeper straight to your striker. It was just littered. And now it's like, you know what? Just put my name. <laughs> <laughs> My life comes in like my or just blank, or just get it blank, <laughs> or just get it blank. But now, and I want those days where it's a struggle to choose which player you want. And now, like I was saying, maybe we have two, maybe three players, give or take, that you would say again, world class. To me, Jaden Sancho is world class, and to me, that is a no brainer to, to to get. But as well, I was quite surprised to hear a lot of our correspondents say just how this coronavirus pandemic has really affected the market as well as clubs. Um, the fact that, you know, it has also, we've constantly been asking the question for Dortmund, when are Dortmund going to stop giving away their top players and feeding the likes of Bayern? Because we want to see Dortmund compete. This is the, this last Will season. Will ever be their model? I don't know. Will that ever be yeah. their model? Well, that's what I was saying. And I think they, they've slowly started to try to get there. This last season in the Bundesliga was one of the most competitive I think I have seen in a long time. I mean, when I had the chat with Lewandowski just a few weeks ago, he said it himself. He was like, you know, he he also was a bit surprised to see the likes of, you know, Munch and Gladbach on their tail, on Bayern's tail. Um, Dortmund, of course, right there. You saw Leipzig, how good they have come up. So now I think that has given Dortmund probably a taste of the fact that they can compete and now they have more competition than just them chasing Bayern. So they're caught between a rock and a hard place because... You know, do they make these great deals in the transfer market that we know they have done? But should they hang on to when they see that they have world class talent mm -hmm. like they have with Jadon Sancho right now, who could become their big man? He could become their Lionel Messi and have a team built sure. around him. You know, do they give that to Man United? And for us, I think no brainer. Of course, United should go for it. But it's a bit of an unfortunate time that now it seems like Dortmund are having this revelation where they might want to hang on to their top players, given the 
coronavirus pandemic and its effects of the transfer market. Um, but I think, oh goodness me, if I have to go and break my piggy bank and take it to everywhere <laughs> and be like, please just take what you can. <laughs> take <laughs> <laughs> to make Jada oh. work. Okay, we got. Do you know what? There's a lot of people with um, making contributions and, and putting some questions to you, Alexis. So we're going to get those to you. This is one here. This is from Aditya. It says Alexis, do you ever get annoyed at some correspondence, at some comments aimed at United from some of the correspondents on ESPMs, or do you not really care? That's one for you there. Does it? You know, when when people have a have a pop at Man United, obviously you got to keep it professional. You work there, but are you secretly thinking, Don't come for my team? Like, you know, how how is that? Well, of course, you know, I try to keep it 100% unbiased, you know, and objective as possible. But of course it does. And I mean, there's there's a couple of things on the show that we do say because we know it will get under each other's skin. The one person on the show that um, really does not care is Craig Burley. Like, people I'm say that, listen, talk to him for me, you know. He, he keeps coming for us. I'm not, I'm not having it. I'm not having it. Well, you know, I love, I love Craig because he, Craig is, he tells it like it is because people say that, he won't criticize Chelsea. He criticizes Chelsea the most because, as he said, Chelsea doesn't pay his wages anymore. So it is what it is. I mean, but like, for example, Stevie, Stevie's tried and true Liverpool. Why not? The last time before this time that Liverpool won the Premier League, Stevie was a part of it, you know, well, when it was the top flight. And he definitely, he definitely will have a pop at United here and there for sure. He's ready. But, yeah. um, oh, of, naturally so. Like, we know how to wind him up. But to be fair, now that I know them and I know how the boys are, like, it doesn't, it doesn't really keep me up at night. Like it is, it's all in the spirit of banter. Plus I do respect their opinions a lot because they're the ones that have played, you know, football at the highest level. I obviously didn't. I've just been, my brothers used to chuck me in between two trees in Jamaica and just kick balls at me. He said I was a goalkeeper. So that's the most. <laughs> but listen, Alexa, but you know that Alexis, yeah, what it is, is there's a lot of pro footballers out there who turn pundits and you got, yeah, when they, when they say certain things, you kind of feel as a fan that, yeah, Boy, I can't really say anything, but some of them talk nonsense though. <laughs> like I've seen Jamie O'Hara at Talk Sports say some mad stuff. Danny Mills is saying some mad stuff. Um, who else? Danny Murphy is saying some mad stuff. These are all men who have played football, but it ha like I mean, they do come out with some crazy stuff sometimes. Yeah, they do. You know, they do. I mean, like I was saying, just because they played football at the highest level doesn't mean they always get it right. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. It's. It's just the way things go. And sometimes, I mean, you can tell the good from the bad, um, you, which is probably the ones that you see tend to be flavor of the month and the other ones that don't. But at least for the most part, a lot of the times we do definitely wind each other up on that one. But um, yeah, to be fair, it doesn't it doesn't bother me as much. Usually, You should see the conversations we have off camera. Oh, God. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> that would surely get people going. There's more questions here, Alexis. Um, I'm just going to get through some of them now. We're going to we're going to hold some of them and, and get them to you. Macaulay says, "Um, why are why are we not looking at Ismail Assar at Watford? A lot of people keep talking about that. Hold that thought there, Alexis. Um, another super chat here says, um, Bruno Fernandez more world class than Rashford in my opinion. Um, interesting. You look at the impact that he's had since he's come in. Um, there's another super chat down here. I want to make sure I get through these as quickly as I can. Um, and Afik says, repping the new third kit, absolute flames. 100% agree um, okay. with that. Do you know what, Alexis, before we go on to, um, oh, actually, Ray S says here, Regulon is a must, I think, as well. Yeah, we're going to talk about that a little bit um, towards the end of the show as well. Um, before we move on with more Man United stuff, um, Sa, yeah, at Watford, is that a, a feasible you know, replacement if we don't get Jane Sancho, you know, you will have to spend another year, a year in a championship under Watford will be considerably less than Jane Sancho, but Watford fans might not want to get their, one of their best players gone. But do you think that's a feasible option? Man, I, I have such a, I have such a lot of love for Watford that it would break my heart to go and take one of their best players right I now. Love for Watford. I, I'm here you on that. I got one for Watford. Oh, my good boy. He's like my brother from another mother, Adrian Mariapa, you know. Oh, um, Max is always repping. Yeah, yeah Max, you know, Max is, uh, so I've been to a couple of, you know, Watford games and when they tell me that it's a family club, just obviously being from Jamaica, now that I've lived in England for a year, this is the first time that I've been able to actually go to live matches and other stadiums and see what it's like. And Watford really is like that family club. I mean, they saw a big old everlasting Man United tattoo and still treated me like one of their own, you know? So it, I, it would break me. And it really broke my heart to see Watford get relegated. Really, I was... 
oh, trying my best to, to work some Obia magic to make I sure. I know, that. I know, man. I wanted to see them stay up as well, but. Yeah, and Sar, I mean, Sar was absolutely I mean, When I think of him, I just, whenever I hear his name, I just think of that result against Liverpool. And I just wonder, oh, goodness me, if they only had a couple more like that. But I mean, again, super talent. He's super young. What is he, like 22 or so? So still quite young. Um, when you say though you think that would be a feasible kind of replacement for sancho again with all due respect but we are talking about jade and sancho like i said that oh. world-class name and player that we need you know of a similar age group as well so it's like i feel like he'd be great you know and he could probably come in and become a great man united player i think he's an immense talent but i mean if you can get jade and sancho you have to go. Like I don't like with all due respect. I'm trying to really respect for right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying you know, do you want the champagne right now? But what about a, yeah, here's, here's prosecco. In the meantime, it's a different kind of champagne, but <laughs> not quite the one that you were expecting. Yeah. You know, it's still great. And again, just because you're a big name like Jadon Sancho doesn't mean you can come into a, a team like United and all of a sudden be big man on campus. Look how we start with. Falcao, look how we've seen it more recently with Alexis Sanchez as well. Just because you're a big name elsewhere, it doesn't right. come in and automatically hit the ground running. And someone like Sarah, maybe who does not have that attention and pressure on him, could come in United and be one of the best players for United. We look at Bruno Fernandes, not many people probably knew that much about him before he came to United. And now, as you know, someone just pointed out that they think that he's more world-class right now than Marcus Rashford. I say absolutely fair because that impact that Fernandez has had on this United team, even I look at it and I can't explain it because I want to, I would pay for his vacation if I could. Because <laughs> like, a couple of the matches, last matches towards the end, I was like, give this man a break. But we can't yeah. afford to give him he a had break. United on his back. He did. He had United oh, on his back. He absolutely did. And I was like, we can't, we can't, you know, we can't afford to give him a break. And that's what I want. I want to be able to give Bruno Fernandez a break that you can bring him off, give him a rest, and still bring someone just as good or of the same caliber to still, you know, keep that level of the game and not mm. have that drop off that we've seen one too many times this last season. 100%. I, I definitely get what you're saying about Watford, though. I, I've got a couple of friends who are Watford yeah. fans, one in particular, and they always tell me how much of a family club Watford is. And and I've done an interview with Troy Deeney as well, and he, he said yeah. the same thing. And when you get to know a couple of the players around there as well, you kind of feel a little bit like, I don't want you to go down. I want you not to stay. And I hear what you're saying about taking one of their prize assets because I want them to come back up. Um, yeah. Ray on Williams Sports TV says, Flex, I'm vexed. You're not even say thanks for my super chat. Apologies, bro. <laughs> they come for you on here. It's ruthless on here, Alexis. Apologies, Ray on, man. That's and you know, the super chats come up so quick, guys. And, you know, Alexis is giving her answers and sometimes they time out. So so bear with me. Bear with me. Um, Sean from Ireland says, Alexis, what do you think of the United stand? I'm saying you're on it now. What, what, do, you, what do you think of, of the channel? <laughs> I love it. I love it, man. I honestly, I will admit that I, I've only known it for about like maybe a year or two now, obviously more so since I've gotten here. Um, but I love it. I think it's it's refreshing as well, because as somebody that works in media, um, you obviously have to be you're representing a company. So you do have to be kind of, you know, objective. And that's fine. That's exactly what I, I prefer to be anyways. But um, me, in terms of my personality, it's hard sometimes to keep my United <laughs> down. Yeah. I have to keep yeah. it in check, but it's refreshing to see, you know, the, the fan base and the people that really care about the club and still, I believe, always should have a platform to express those views because we talk about it um, so many times that you, when you see United playing or you see a couple of seasons that I think every club goes through it, but you see how maybe we talked about do footballers really care? about the fans. These are the ones that are putting, saving up their lunch money. I remember saving up my lunch money for at least a year just to order my first United jersey when I was in high school. And yeah. it's like, do they notice that? And I feel like with all these fan channels, obviously we'd be lying to say if players and media and clubs were not taking notice. We know that they have been. And Definitely, I think that, yeah. that, you know, long may that continue because I think that that helps, you know, the game ultimately that whether it, you know if if it makes the players that may not be having the best day feel it in the back of their mind like you know we've seen with arsenal like even people in the media go gosh every time arsenal lose i just tune into AFT. Yeah. 
Sometimes it might make you feel not so nice to play, you know what I mean? But for sure, yeah. I definitely know players do watch it, um, you know, especially the, the younger players. They're on their phones all the time. They're on the social media thing. They they are watching. They, they are watching sure. um, yeah. Rich, um, Rick, Rick Amank says, um, Flex, I think David Brooks will be a better option to Sancho. He's an intelligent footballer. David Brooks from Bournemouth as an alternative to Sancho, Alexis. What are you saying? Again, I'm just going to echo the same sentiment as we did with Sar. I mean, I understand there are so many great other options that, you know, maybe more feasible, maybe pocket friendly, I suppose, for United, given the, like I keep saying, the financial situations that everyone's feeling because of the coronavirus pandemic. But this is Jaden Sancho we're talking about. <laughs> for me, there is no replacement. If I yeah. say I want the champagne, I want the champagne, and I want you to give me the champagne. Will I take the second one stuff after? Okay, but absolutely only after we have exhausted all options, including Alexis's piggy bank going up there. Yeah, then put it in there. there. But so it's like not David, Brooks, not David Brooks. I can agree with that. That's to be honest, <laughs> that's that's ridiculous. I'll say it. That's just, that's just madness. That's just madness. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on then with the squad then. I mean, look, we spoke about transfers. We spoke about Tiago. We spoke about Regulon. And if you are just joining us, we've got about 8,000 people watching live, which is dope. Um, smash a like on the video and hit subscribe if you're new. Um, if you are just joining us, reports at Manchester United are going to be tabling a bid for Regulon very, very soon. But the buyback option, it seems to be an issue. Um, and I kind of agree with that. I don't want to, you know, when I was younger and I used to borrow a PlayStation game off one of my friends because I didn't have it and I'm getting into it, I'm getting far. And then my friend goes boy, I need that game back, you know. I'm pissed. Like, do you know what I mean? I'm pissed. So for yeah. me, um, I, I want that buyback clause gone. We don't want to be getting a good player on our hands after a year or two and then Real Madrid come taking back. So that's the latest on that. United yet to table a bid, but essentially it looks like we may do um, in, in, the, in, the coming, in the coming days, if not weeks. Um, Alexis, outgoings, outgoings. As you're looking at the squad, there hasn't been any notable, noticeable outgoings. Chris Morland's probably the closest to leaving what are you saying about outgoings? Chris Smalling being the closest to me. I was laughing because I was saying Chris Smalling went away. He went to Italy and we got we called him back and he looked reluctant to come back. And I think that's want to be here and want to stay there. That says so much. Because I remember Chris Smalling, again, with all due respect to like, of course, him and the likes of basically almost anyone put in a defensive position for United in the last what two, three, four seasons, maybe has been the butt of so many jokes. You know, a Ashley Young as well. And and then I'm just like, wow, they've gone to Italy and now it's like looking at your boo who was absolutely miserable with you and then they go somewhere else and now they're flourishing on a yacht with like their new boo and they're just like... Well, Alexis said after one day he wanted to rip up the contract, which we, we share the same sentiment, mate. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see Rafael da Silva's response to that? Yeah, 100%. He sat him down. Love that. Oh, love that. Love that. I've spoken to Rafael da Silva as well. Um, recently, during lockdown, we had a nice interview for ESPN, and that man is a red through and proper. through and through. Proper red through. You know what? I would bring him back. If we want to, like, take Chris Smalling out and bring Rafael da Silva back or something, even if it's that like for like, I say 100%, because, again, it's that heart, it's that work rate that we do miss seeing at United. Um... But Chris Smalling, I suppose we've lived without him, haven't we, now for a year? So it's not, I wouldn't be heartbroken. I wouldn't okay, be heartbroken. that's one. Chris Smalling's one. Oh, jeez. Now you have to. Oh, jeez. You see, now this is where the Luke Shaw chatter comes up. <laughs> After I just did the most to try and defend this man. But uh, would I be. Would I be heartbroken if Luke Shaw if Luke Shaw left say and we got Reguillon, then I guess I wouldn't be heartbroken. Okay, fair enough. Do you know what? That's a massive shout. I, every time I ask this question, no one's really put Luke Shaw in the hat. So controversy central. Alexis is kind of <laughs> but I, saying, I love Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try and backtrack. Don't try and backtrack. I would say I, necessarily be, I would say I wouldn't necessarily be heartbroken because again. The defense has literally made mm. me want to cry so okay. many times where it's like, and I know it's so easy to get caught up in just obviously attacking play because that's what we want to see. We want to see goals. We want to see these kind of things. But I mean, it doesn't, what are we going to do? Go out there and just try outscore every single opponent? No, like, you know, it, it's, <laughs> we can't do that. You know, that doesn't really work. That's not a good blueprint. And I think that, um, 
especially now, given the situation with David De Gea. I mean, uh, no, no, I'm not going there. I'm not going there. <laughs> <laughs> do you know, know what I mean? As they say at home, you go where you want and go. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just threw a little bit out there. So, what about you? What about you, Flex? Um I'm go- well actually first of all, I'm just gonna read out these super chats and I get back to it. Um Sam says get Sancho no matter the cost. Sell uh sales on that number seven jersey will repay the sum in no time. I agree with that. Um Kay says Alexis, get Phil Jones a job at ESPN. Best transfer news I've ever I would have. <laughs> So I don't know if you got links and connections in there, but they're saying Phil get Jones is another one. How, you see, I I try <laughs> so hard to forget that he's in my team that I I couldn't even think of it. But Phil, you know, I'd rather Phil come work with us at ESPN than play for United again. What a, um, wow! Like, okay. just, there you go. I'm saying I'm saying um, Pereira. He can go. Um, I think surplus to requirements. Where's he going to play? Like he proved he got given a chance time and time again. Um, played at number 10, played on the wing, even played deeper yeah. play in midfield. I just don't think he has the quality that we need. I think he can go. I mean, certain people will say check his passport to see if he is definitely Brazilian, because some people ain't sure. That's what I that's what I see some people say. I'm not sure. So he can go. I think I look, I like Jesse personally. You know, I've I've met him a good few times. I, I know he's a great guy. I know he's had a lot to deal with off the pitch. I think for his own career. Because I don't think he's going to get the game time that he probably deserves or would like at this stage of his career. I think he should go too. I think he's had a lot of opportunities to to impress. Um, for one reason or another, he hasn't. But again, I would like I, I would I would I would move him on if if the right bid come in. Because I, I, I don't think he's going to play Alexis. Is is he going to play for you? That's the thing. I I mean, I, gosh, it's again met Jesse plenty of times. Absolutely love him. He's like. Just such a great vibe to be around as well. And I think I'm still just in love with the idea of Jesse Lingard at Man United just because, you know, that is home for him. But you're right. I think he deserves more playing time. I think he deserves a fresh start. And he's only going to get that fresh start probably somewhere else. You know, like whether he goes, you know, like Ashley Young and Chris Smalling to somewhere in Italy, he's got, you know, that big super agent now as well that could probably secure a move there too. I think that would actually be quite good would you let him go and then come back <laughs> nah. done. You done. I'm not really I'd like alone is someone like I know Jesse's obviously young at heart and he's always kind of messing about and he's got a great personality but you know what it's like people think like Jesse's mad young he's, he's not like he's nearly 30 like he's 27 isn't he 27 going on 28 I think like for me personally if he goes out on the on the loan I just don't see. I think the squad has just moved on. I, I really do. I think the squad, like you look at Van der Beek in there now, you look at Bruno Fernandez in there now. If we get Sancho or another attacking player in there, where does Jesse get the game time from apart from the EFL Cup? So he should, he should, I, you know, I would have said, you know, maybe go to like an Everton or a Leicester. But you look at those teams, they've, they've got some ballers. Like I, I, I don't know where Jesse goes next. But for me, I just think that the love story is there. It's great. He come through the yeah. academy and, he had his loans at the beginning of his career and he came back. He had that purple patch where he was amazing. Lingardino, we were calling him. Do you know what I mean? And <laughs> then it just kind of went a bit south for 18 months. And I get he's had a lot of on his mind. Yeah. Um, but I think it looks like he's going to stay anyway, though, to be fair. Um, I, I, there's just been not really any movement. So he's another one that I would look to. I think Sergio Romero, now we've got Dean Henderson back. He well, deserves to play, right. man. Yeah. He, deserves, would- he deserves to play. That's why I tried to open up that goalkeeper talk, and unfortunately, I started it with De Gea. But that's the conundrum there because you see, I rate Sergio Romero like right up there. I mean, obviously, I knew it, it would have been really bold for Ole, and he would have really opened the door to more abuse if he did just decide to pull the ballsy move and just completely told De Gea to have a sit down, <laughs> let Romero do his thing for a bit. Um, and now that Dean Henderson is back, I'm I'm super excited to see Dean Henderson in action. And I think for so long we have been talking so much about whether Dean Henderson can cope with the pressure and the spotlight at Man United. Mm. And I think you're only get uh, you're only ever going to know that now if you just play him, and he has to be played for that. And I think that now, as you said, it, it leaves that little difficult decision of whether we go, you know, with De Gea 
or Romero. I think a lot of people, it'd be interesting to see their comments. Probably on paper would say, obviously the name like David the Hair carries weight. Um, so naturally, but based on the last two seasons, you know, it's, I wouldn't, again, be <laughs> heartbroken if maybe Romero got that shot. Ooh, okay. <laughs> so what, so, we, so we Dean Henderson back. Oh. And De Gea, obviously, just he's been moving mad the last two years. Let's just let's just be honest. He has a very nice way of putting it. Yeah, <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. In this space, it's it's fine. The the correctness that you have to come with versus the ESPN, the Sky Sports, the BT. It's all right here. We can say that he's been moving. Mad. He's been moving mad, and that's been moving mad. <laughs> um, but you're saying with Henderson back, maybe even um, Romero getting a shot if he doesn't. Leave, which I don't know. I don't know if I can see that because I think they really believe yeah. in it. We're in definitely not going to see that. You know, we're definitely going to yeah, see yeah. that. Yeah, like I said, his name carries weight. We, he was at one point the best goalkeeper in the world, period. And you know, that's something that um, obviously Romero can't say. And mm. I think that, but you know, there's always careful that we like to tell people stop being historians because you are as good as your last game, that kind of stuff. Um, I still, I suppose the real question now is, and I'll ask this to you too, do you think David De Gea can come back? Do you think David De Gea can be I, I, David De Gea of old? I've, I've wanted to see this happen to David De Gea, which is be seriously challenged. And we will see that with Dean Henderson. I think that's a statement. By not sending him back out on loan, that's a statement from Solskjaer to say, right, David, you need to fix up. You've been carrying on with some silly mistakes and you haven't been the same, David. But like I've like I've said many a times, after that mistake at Watford, after that mistake at uh, Everton where he just passed it to Calvert Lewin, is David De Gea, is he is that is David De Gea on the coach, right? Looking at Romero next to him, going, Boy, you're taking my spot next game. No, he's not. He knows he's safe. So now he's got the young, hungry kid there. David, show us. I, I would love nothing more than to start the season and David De Gea goes back to being phenomenal, so phenomenal that Dean Henderson can't get a look in. But it's up to David De Gea. Can he train harder? Can he train smarter? Can he can he can he can he raise his level? I'm yeah. I think the jury's out. I can't answer the question. I don't know. But I've wanted to I've wanted to see this. I've wanted to see him seriously challenged because as soon as something happens, whether it be one mistake or a couple of mistakes. As soon as Ollie gives the nod to, to Henderson, it's peak because you know what the goalkeeper situation is like. You kind of need that vote of confidence from your manager. It's not like an outfit yep. position where you can have a few games, then go back to the bench. Your number one is your number one. You need you need a constant. So for me, to answer your question, I hope he can, but it's a big question mark because you know he's been not great for for a long time, and now he's got this young kid breathing down his neck. I agree with you on that one, like 100%, because I feel like um, I'm not willing to give up on the hair just yet. I, in the terms of, I don't think physically he's past his best. I don't, I, I think he can still bring some of that back, you know, or at least be the consistent, you know, man between the sticks that we know he can be. Um, I don't think that that just necessarily fades away overnight, which it's not been overnight. We know it's been a season or two, but I think that it also helped probably to uh, a more harmful extent in the sense that you're right, he was safe. He was never going to look at Sergio Romero and be like, oh yeah, he's definitely going to get in over me. No, because this is David De Gea. And again, that name carries weight. So I think now with Dean Henderson in, I feel like this could be De Gea's last chance in the sense that this is the last chance to get that kick up your backside. And I guess show us if you still have it or not, because if not, then like you said, we've seen, how Dean Henderson has been lauded from just being at Sheffield as well, um, as now he's in the talk of whether he should be England's number one as well. I know, so it's crazy, if he's yeah. England's number one, you know, he's not going to be the number three at his club. Like, no, you know, your manager is going to take note of that. The media is going to take note of that. And eventually, I'm sure it's going to come down to Ole and he's going to have to make a decision. And I think that this season will be absolutely crucial for the hair um i i don't want to say that i feel like he's not motivated like because again we don't know him person i personally don't know him personally um and i'll give him you know more respect than that to think that he's not trying or or whatever he's just fallen out of love with the club i don't think that at all but i think that you know something something has to change and i'm hoping that dean henderson does like that spark and we do see you know probably a brilliant season of goalkeeping, even though that doesn't sound exciting, but 
Yeah, we need I to see it, that. but we do. We do need to see it. We need it. to see yeah. that. Yeah, that's, that's, to me, again, in terms of looking at defense and goalkeeping, that's what gets me. That's where I'm looking at most this coming season than, say, going forward. I feel confident um, for United going forward. I feel like, you know, with, like you said, the addition of now Van der Beek, as well as, you know, Bruno Fernandes and the revelation that he's been, the way I've seen Paul Pogba um, react, the way I know Marcus Rashford, that's my number 10, love him, um, <laughs> how he is, Tony Martial as well, who, you know, absolutely love, and Mason Greenwood, Gunwood, we'll talk about Mason in a sec. That They get me excited, and they're all still quite young, that I know with time, I'm expecting them to only go from strength to strength, but it's the back that I need. I need to see something magical there, man. Need I need reinforcements, for sure. Um, Afik says, we'll get through some of the contributions before we go on to Mason Greenwood and finish off with Oli. Um, Afik, Jay says, do you guys feel that the Sancho deal is not moving because the board knows that it's difficult to sell off the dead wood? Interesting there. That's That could be... A big part of it. David Parker, thanks for the contribution. He says, if Romero stays, maybe setting up Henderson or De Gea for a January big money move, um, potentially. So that's interesting as well. Maybe they might want to sell um, him. Uh, that would be that would be mad if they did. Um, Kiseli says, West Brom or Fulham need to help us take our legends. Pink Jones, fake Brazilian Pereira, Rojo the tackle man, and good man Matt or Messi Lingardinho, basically saying Fulham or West Brom can have <laughs> Those players as their surplus. They're ruthless on here, Alexis. I'm He's telling you. He's in ages. Marcos Rojo. You see, I even forgot he was <laughs> in my team too. Man like Marcos Rojo. Listen. Go, he's still here. You know if we could chuck him in the octagon, for sure, that would be my fighter. But he's <laughs> Marcos. Sometimes when I see him, I'm like, what? What? What are we doing? I know. <laughs> doing that it's like oh geez at ages but um we'll see that's actually i think a, a a huge point it is difficult to sell off i guess we could call them the fringe players since you're feisty about deadwood but it is what it is but the fringe players and, and it's true because now you're looking at a lot of them and i i guess say for say the likes of jesse lingard whose name i still believe carries weight because as we just spoke we both respect him a lot um because you're wondering where where they would go obviously if we could sell them all off, you'd get some coin and maybe that will help the financial situation because from now what I understand with the Sancho thing is not that, I mean, obviously personal terms seem to have been agreed, agent fees as well. It seems like a match made in heaven, but it is just that fee United not wanting to be bullied and rightfully so, and Dortmund not wanting to be bullied. And again, rightfully so based on, like I said, the same, I guess, advancements we've seen from them and other teams in the Bundesliga and the fact that things have been getting more competitive. They probably felt that they got closer to Bayern than they have in the last couple of seasons. So why would they want to sell one of their world-class stars that they could eventually maybe even build a team around? So mm -hmm. I think it is just um, it is just that. And obviously more money coming in would help that situation maybe to, to offer Dortmund a bit more without feeling that they're going outside their you know comfort zone during given this pandemic. So... That's why that's why it's um that's why it's concerning because there's not really been much outgoings to get more money in. So that's why I mm -hmm. think a lot of Man United fans, yeah, there's three weeks to go, but it's more like, boy, we're not really getting anyone out. Um Sella says, um, think the hair will be um league keeper with Henderson in the cups. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, that could that could happen, especially um FA Cup and, and EFL Cup. It'd be nice to see Henderson get some get some time. Right, Alexis, we've got just over 10 minutes left. We've got to talk about Mason Greenwood and then finish off with Oli. Yeah. I mean, Mason's been under so much criticism. Like, I, I feel the media are out to get out to get him. They're out to kind of chew him up and spit him out. It's almost like just before he got the England call up, um, he was doing so well. He's been lauded as amazing. Not, like, I'm not saying Manchester United fans. I'm talking outside of us because we all support Mason. Um, and yes, look what happened in the in the England camp for sure. You know, don't get me wrong. You can't make mistakes like that come out, you apologise, we have to put an arm around him, you have to learn from that silly move. But then they came from again trying to dig out old videos. It's like this whole cancel culture is just so real. Everyone's trying to just find dirt on people and just, you know, try and kick him while he's down. And I'm just uncomfortable with it. I just I just don't like mm -hmm. it. Um, but what, what's your thoughts on, on, on Mason and, and what's been going on? I mean, 100%, I suppose, for Mason Greenwood, it's literally like, Welcome to the big times, because this is exactly how it is. And second of all, I think absolutely do I feel like it's, I don't know where it's come from, but all of a sudden there's a target on this kid's back. And that's what we have to remember. He's a kid. 
He's 18 years old. Give the man a break. It's unfortunate that he does have to be more aware of the fact that any mistake he makes, he could breathe from his left nostril more than his right and people will get at him. And it's something that I've had to get used to because again, like I said, growing up in Jamaica, our media is not really this um, sensationalized, I want to say. There's no real paparazzi culture. I mean, like I know the likes of like Usain Bolt quite well and people always ask me, how you know people he could be out at carnival having a good time having drinks people taking pictures and he's not you know on the front page of jamaica newspapers yeah, it's different out there. yeah it doesn't work and, like exactly and i was just like i didn't realize it until i've come here and i've seen it's it's almost like you build them up to tear them down and and i have to stop and i ask people too like other colleagues that i have working in the british media here and i ask them i go but these are your own people, like these are the same people that you expect to probably lead your country one day. You know, well, out heroes, when heroes come this year coming up, so this season, should I say, they're all gonna be rooting for him, saying, "Go on, mate, score, on, lad, go on, do your do your stuff, mate." And then now they're, they're, they're getting on his back. It's exactly, and I think this um, it is a very very dirty tactic to have to go back and dig up like every little fault that this again teenager has done like you know the old saying don't throw stones if you live in a glass house because we've all done stupid things the only difference is that his stupid things now are in the limelight and that's something that again he has to get used to and and grow from as well but the point is he's gonna make them nobody is perfect and at the same time i don't feel that we need to sit here and just tear him down left right and center it is it feels like a witch hunt for silly mistakes. Again, the one obviously for England on England duty. Now that is is more than I think a silly mistake. That is like, yeah, come on. For sure. That was, that was. Some of the other stuff, and undoubtedly there will be other things as well. I mean, like I said, he's 18 years old, but we really and truly don't need to put a magnifying glass to all of it and try and crucify him for every little thing. We have to be careful to not break his spirit before he's even really had a chance. Like I said, he just made his debut for England. You know, he should have had two games under his belt by now. Unfortunately, it was just the one because of his own doing. But mm. you know, I think he is a good kid from any interaction I've had with him. Um, again, good kids still make stupid mistakes. I think he's got a brilliant career ahead of him because it's just, when we see him play, I mean, we talk about it all the time too, just to see the, the level of composure and control he has on the ball and some of his finishing. Oh. Yeah, it's probably. like way beyond his years. And I hope that that continues. Um, obviously, he's going to mature with time. But at the same time, we don't need to make this a witch hunt. We don't need to criticize him for, you know, having a slice of pizza the night before a match. Like, let the man live. Love him. Exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> Noah Allen says, Alexis, opinions on Martial. In my opinion, Rashford is high class, but not world class. He's far too inconsistent. Just my opinion. What's your thoughts? I mean, what's your thoughts on, on Tony, man? A and nine. I knew you were going there because I always talk to Rance when he always does that Martial FC. I know he, uh, I, I love me some Tony Martial as well. I really, really do. I think um, during the earlier parts of his career, there was a lot of talks similar about like with this Mason Greenwood thing, if his like off the field kind of antics were affecting what we saw on the field. Probably, probably a little bit. You know, he, he did seem like a bit of a different personality, but. I think, I mean, his quality on the pitch is, it's there for everyone to see, especially this season. We have seen him come out and produce some absolute beauties. Um, do I think he's world-class in terms of that world-class signing or whatever or player that I'm looking for more of on United? Probably not. Um, I would say that I still would probably rate Marcus Rashford maybe higher, but um, I think... I think <laughs> <laughs> I think okay, okay, okay. You know, I think I feel like I also in the back of my head. I mean, obviously I could be wrong. Everybody can pull me up. That's fine. Um, I feel like I'm also thinking of Marcus Rashford based on potential because I think we both, you and I, can both agree that we are expecting Marcus Rashford to go from strength to strength. Mentally, I feel like he's there and he has what it takes to be captain. You know, I mean, nobody would be surprised if he's ever made captain. You know, of club and country. Um, and I think that that's 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 where I'm thinking. That's the trajectory I'm thinking for Marcus Rashford, and okay. I think that's probably why I'm giving him the edge, so to speak. But Tony, I mean, I'm happy for Martial FC, hundred <laughs> percent. 
I, I, got, my, I, got, my love, I got my love for him. But what about you, Flex? What do you think? World Rashford, class or just... Rashford, def, Martial, for me, is streaks ahead of Rashford, for me. It's not... Like, take away the Martial FC and doing the funny stuff and that. Like, I, I just... Just from a, from a football IQ uh, perception, mm. from the way he looks after the ball, how clinical he is... Um, Rashford, you're right, has got gears to go up. He just needs to find that consistency. Um, but Tony, when I look at him, I just think he's a natural footballer. Um, yeah. And the way he's kind of morphed into the number nine position, like I said, the intelligence he plays with, with, even if he's not scoring, the way he brings people into play, he passes at the right time, he shoots at the right time, he moves into space at the right He just makes the right decisions at the right time for me. Um, so, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't always like to, because you know, you know what it's like on social media. Within yeah. your own fan base, People get into arguments like about their own players. Like, I'm happy just that we have, do you know what I'm saying? Rashford. Yeah. Rashford. So, I'm, I don't go to that level, but because you're asking me, I would, I would, I would say, yeah, Martial's here, and I'd say Rashford's kind of there for me. Yeah. Um, Rashid, we, we appreciate them both. Hundred percent, they're both our players. Rashain says, "Big up Alexis from a fellow Jamaican." So yeah, big up Rashain. Got another Jamaican in the house there. Um, Salia uh, says, just seeing that Glazers out is trending on Twitter. That's always a good thing, but it doesn't exactly, um, you know, annoy the Glazers. They just keep moving how they move. I saw how much dividends they took out in our latest, um, in our latest um, financial um, information that got published, and it just, it just doesn't surprise me there. Um, and you know what? Lastly, before we get to the end of the video. Um, loads of people enjoying you coming on, Alexis. Someone said, um, nice bringing on um, new guests, loving the, loving the switch up. That's what, that's what it's all about, getting points and, and yeah. from everyone. No problem. Um, Ollie. Um, oh, boy. <laughs> Why are you saying, oh, boy? What do you mean? You know, we've got us to fair. Do I need a cup of tea for this? <laughs> what are you saying about um, Ollie? I mean, how much pressure do you think is on him? Do you, what, what type of job do you think he's done? What do you think the heights of him can be at United? Where are you at? I think that, wow. Do you know what? I'm still I'm still in love with the idea of Ole being a success at Man United. Do I think, I mean, we literally had this conversation the other day that he, could he be United's most successful manager since Fergie, at least in recent times? And... I feel like you almost want to say could be. I wouldn't be 100% surprised because I feel like he's got now the backing of the board to give him what he needs. And I think the players that have recently come in, a.k.a. Bruno Fernandes, have done a world of good for him. I think this last season and exactly where United finished last season did an absolute world of good for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And... Um, so a couple of things that I have noticed as well from the players, and we talk about, you know, like Spurs' documentary now, The All or Nothing, and how it gives us a glimpse behind the scenes and what, what it's like, you know, the interactions between players and managers. And I feel like I've always wanted to see that at Man United. And just now in lockdown, when I got to speak to, obviously, a couple of players, like including Andre Herrera, Rafael Da Silva too, Jesse Lingard, um, one of the things that all of them have said is that Ole knows how to talk to them as people. Like, he mm. knows how to talk to them That's as a man player. management is the best asset he has. Exactly. And I feel like man management is something that um, is so crucial, but people don't necessarily big it up as much. And I feel like that's what they've said, that he Ole has this remarkable thing, which is rare to find in managers, that you know they can he can still command a certain level of respect um but he still when you walk in you don't feel that weird intimidation like okay this is a boss blah 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 they look at him as this is all gonna so shy he played for united and because maybe he's still got such a baby face they feel like he's another player he's yeah. another player there he talks to them as if he were a player coach instead of just this kind of rule with an iron fist um thing and the only other person that i've heard somebody say that about too uh, which was actually Lewandowski when I asked him, you know, he's gotten to work with some top, top managers, which one was his favorite. And he said, um, Jurgen Klopp, because Klopp also manages to do that. And you see that, you see that at Liverpool, you see the harmony there. Klopp looks like the, you know, the cool rock star uncle almost anybody wants, like, but he still also commands that respect that, you know, not to cross him and he can get his team to play exactly how he wants it. And I think that that's a bit of an unsung heroic, 
trait of Ole that um, now in lockdown, I feel like I've understood more from speaking to more and more players, which is why I feel like that in and of itself can get him a level of success that probably none of us are thinking he can achieve right now. So mm. I think I have a lot of eyes on him and I, I view him in a different way now. And especially we've seen the rebuild going on. We are excited from all the players that United has been linked with in this transfer window more so than before. I think it feels like there's been more of an exciting time at Man United. And I think that that has done a world of good for Ole. And I mean, like I said, I, I hope it continues. I have absolutely nothing against Ole. He's an absolute legend in my eyes, for sure, baby-faced assassin. We'll always call him that. And I'm all right. assassin, yeah, okay. Yeah. I think that, um, I think we should give him more time and, 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 we'll, and we'll just see, we'll see. I know lots of people feel like he doesn't have a clue and fair play, he's still a young manager, but so is Frank Lampard as well, you know? So is Mikel Arteta. Pressure's on him, 100%, the pressure's and on them. We're going probably into a new era of management that we also probably have to get used to a different kind of style and a different, um, way of of viewing football and football management as well. So I think, right as of now, I have nothing against Ole being at Man United for a lot more time. But we all know this can change overnight. So we it's all down. It's all down to results. It is. Listen, Alexis, an hour has just gone so quick. Thanks for coming on, man. Like you're every time I try and say, "Yo, you ready? You coming?" This girl, she's just so busy. She's running up and down the place. She's, she's here, she's there, she's everywhere. Finally, you come on. So, no, nah, everyone's enjoyed it, man, and it's, it's been great. I'm glad. Thank you for having me, man. It was good to see all the interaction from everybody. And I promise I won't wait as long before I come back again. <laughs> exactly, 100%. I mean, we'll, we'll definitely speak about um, when next to come on. So, guys, thanks for watching. Smash a like on the video. Hit subscribe if you are new. Big up to ESPN's Alexis Nunes for coming on as well and sharing some light. Avid Man United fan as well. So when you do see her next on ESPN, just know that she's trying to keep it 100. She's trying to act like she's not a Man United fan, but we all obviously know <laughs> she is. Um, guys, we will see you guys all very soon. We are out of here. Peace.